everyone and welcome to Unit 9, Module 47. We're talking about infancy, childhood, and cognitive development. Here are your learning objectives and here is your vocab. So cognitive development is um, the mental activities that are associated with thinking, knowing, remembering, communicating, and looking at those through the lifespan. Because remember, development is always the entire lifespan. So Jean Piaget, um, who was a Swiss psychologist, he was in Paris in 1920, and he was working on um, intelligence testing with children. And he noticed that children tend to get the same wrong answers um, on the test. So like their way of thinking, even though wrong, was similar. And so he wanted to study that more. And what he found was that children really think differently than adults do. And um, one of the key parts to understanding his stages is to understand that we all use and schemas are concepts or mental like molds, or I think of them as like little cubbies. And we use these to organize and interpret our world. So for example, we have a schema for what we expect to happen at a restaurant. We have a schema for taking a test in class. Um, we have a schema for what we think um, love is or what you do when you love someone. So we have schemas for everything. And we use these cubby holes or these schemas um, in two ways. So if we are looking at something new, we might either assimilate that new thing into an existing cubby hole or create a whole new schema or a whole new cubby hole for that category. It's like, oh, this is something totally new. So, for example, a child might have a schema that a dog is anything with four legs. And they see a cat, and they're like, the cat has four legs. <laughs> they say, oh, it has four legs, so it must be a dog. And they look at the cat, and they start calling it a dog. And maybe their mom or dad is like, that's not a dog. That is a cat because it meows, it purrs, um, and it's smaller, whatever. And so once they learn that new whole category, now they are accommodating. They are creating a new schema that there's this other animal that has four legs, but it also like purrs and meows, and that's a cat. So assimilate is to fit in this, a box you already have, or schema you already have, and accommodate is to create a new schema. So the first, there are four stages in Piaget's um, cognitive development. The first is sensory motor. So kind of think about that word, break it down. It's about our senses and children using those senses and their physical abilities to understand the world around them. So if you think about toys for babies, they are colorful, they make sounds, they feel. Um, there's like different like pages in, in a book that's like they feel different, they have different sensations. Um, maybe they play music. Um, and of course, a lot of toys are just made for babies to put in their mouth because that's another way they explore it. So they explore it with all the senses. Um, during this stage, they um, become aware that objects continue to exist even when they don't see them. So prior to this, and this is really like before five months, um, you can take an object away and as soon as they don't see it, it no longer exists. They won't be trying to get it, they won't care about it, it no longer exists. When you show them again, they're like, oh cool, there it is. Like there's that thing. Um, once they've learned object permanence though, let's say you like cover up the toy with a blanket. If they have object permanence, they'll pick up that blanket and be like, I know where that toy is. It's under this blanket, duh. And um, then they have object permanence. 
So the next is preoperational, and this is two to six or seven years old. And this is when the child is really has like an explosion of language and their mental ways of thinking are very concrete logic. So um, using physical manipulatives to kind of do mathematics. <coughs> um, and at this point, children lack the law of conservation. And this is the idea that the quantity of something stays the same despite it changing shape. So this example here, there's two glasses of water. Um, child agrees, yes, they have the same amount. And then you take one glass, pour it into a taller, skinnier um, glass, and you're now like, which one has more or do they both have the same? And they're like, the taller one has more because it's higher up, so it looks like it has more volume. Um, so that means they lack conservation. Also, um, with the language explosion, it makes sense that that's symbolic thinking, right? Like words are symbols for what we're really talking about out in the world. Like, um, they do a, a study where they have two and a half year olds and they show them a little model room of the same room that they're in and they hide a toy behind the couch. And the two and a half year old can find the toy in the model room where they just saw it hidden but they can't apply that to the room that they're in. Like, oh, this is the same as the room we're in. Let me go find that toy. But by three years old, so six months later, they can use that model to say, oh, this is a symbol of what's actually in my reality. Um, Piaget also incorrectly thought that at this age they were egocentric which means they have difficulty perceiving things from another's point of view. So for example, if they were like showing you a picture, they would be like, look at my picture, and they would hold it up, but so it faces them and their perspective and not allowing the other person to see. Um, he was a little off on this. Um, this goes away much. Also, in preoperational, there is the theory of mind. And this is the idea that we can think about what is this other person thinking about or let's say they're doing pretend play like what does my stuffed animal want to do or what is my dog thinking about like those kinds of things that's theory of mind um, and this is why pretend Piaget really believed in pretend play um, and play in general for children because play was how they were uh, they are learning these. and learning what makes someone angry happy once they kind of learn, like, this makes my parents happy, or if I do this, my parents will come give me a hug, or if I do this, maybe my parents will give me a toy. So using those, and it sounds bad, but like, they're using them in a way to get what they want, but that's actually a really good thing. It's showing that they have theory of mind. Um... They do an experiment where they have a, um, a Band-Aid box and they put pencils in it. And they're like, what do you think's in here? And the child's surprised that it's pencils. And then they ask, like, okay, so if we show this to some other child who hasn't seen what's inside of it, what do you think will be inside of it? And a child who does not have theory of mind would be like, oh, they'll think there's pencils in it because that's what they think, you know? But... Um, if they have theory of mind, the child will say, if someone sees that and they haven't looked in it, they'll, they'll think there's band-aids in it just like I did. So children um, on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum, and deaf children actually have a harder time developing theory of mind. So here's just a little example of um, theory of mind. You can pause it and look back at that if you want. Um, and then the next step is concrete operational, and this is from 6 or 7 to 11 years old. And this is when they begin to grasp the law of conservation, or they do grasp the law of conservation. Formal operations, this is age 12 plus, and this is when they begin to think abstractly. So there's like a little if-then exam example here, um, more difficult, higher level math. Um, this is this is the last step. 
So it's sensory motor, concrete operations, and formal operations. So my little memory aid for this is some pigs can fly. Sensory motor, preoperational, concrete, and formal. Some pigs can fly. So today's view on Piaget, well, he is still considered a very um, influential, one of the most influential psychologists of the 20th century. Um, not so much like he did get several things wrong, but he got the milestones correct. He was a little off on like the timing of when these things happen. He said a lot of these things happen later than when they actually happen. Um, and... Um, researchers today really see things as more continuous than in set stages. So the autism spectrum disorder, it appears in childhood and is marked by significant deficiencies in communication, social interaction, and rigid interests and repetitive behaviors. One in 59 children in the United States, according to the CDC, um, is diagnosed with autism or has autism. Um, and this keeps increasing, um, you know, our awareness and understanding of it keep, keeps increasing, but we're not sure exactly the cause. There are some genetic um, influences that we can see through twin studies and also just that um, younger siblings have an increased risk. It's still a low risk, but it's increased from other children. Um, the spectrum is wide, but it has three main levels, but you really can't think of like every kid who's on level one or is high functioning um, to be the same and every kid who's on level three to be the same. Like every child is so different because there's so much with autism. So Lev Vygotsky, he kind of in a way counters Piaget. He was a Russian psychologist who was really thinking about how children learn by social interactions. They learn to use words and solve problems through working with other people. And he focused on the social environment itself, whereas Piaget really focused on like the kid, like manipulating things in his environment, like playing with toys or something like that in his environment. Um, he, Vygotsky really emphasized the use of scaffolding, which kind of provides like a temporary support for a child um, to get to the next level of thinking. It's like, okay, you can't do this yet, but let's break it down into these easier steps so that you can do it. Um, and so this this kind of like sweet zone of where, okay, you can do this, you can't do that. So right here in the middle, that was the zone of proximal development. And that's like the sweet spot that he said, this is where you need to focus to get the child to the next level. For example, a child learning to ride a bike, um, maybe they're kind of, at first they need help with the pedaling. So you kind of actually put your hands on their knees and like, push them down and like get them to understand that or you help them by holding the steering wheel. Eventually they get that, but they're not ready to go just on two wheels. So they have um, training wheels until they don't need those anymore, etc. So takeaways, remember the difference between assimilation and accommodation. Those can be tricky. Um, Piaget's four cognitive stages. Remember some pigs can fly. And you should remember the key vocab and where it goes. So like object permanence is a big one. Um, law of conservation, egocentrism, those are the big vocab. Um, and today we believe more in continuous and gradual development, but Piaget is still seen as a key contributor to cognitive development. So I hope you've enjoyed this module and I will see you.